They say that you need to be mindful of whatever you wear in terms of your shoes. And especially for ladies, it's good to be careful. But this morning, we're joined by a young lady who has ventured into the shoe business thing and she's really doing it in a broader perspective, not only for ladies now, she's even doing it for gents. And I want to introduce her then, pop in something that I've seen on her Instagram page. And Jerry Mbote, here you are finally. Karibu sana. Asante. Nice to have you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. There's so much we can say about you as a student and make you nini nini. So I want to give an opportunity so you can tell us generally who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am Jerry Mbote, mm -hmm. as you said. I am a shoe designer and uh, founder of Kenya. Kenya is the home of handcrafted footwear. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is what uh, I found on her Instagram page and it's what I want us to begin with. They say, choose a shoe as you would a life partner as it is them that carry you from the moment you leave the house to the time you get back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it is very true. A shoe is not just an accessory. It's like a part of your body. They literally carry you all day from the moment you leave a house. Uh -huh. So when you choose a shoe, of course you want something that will carry you well. You don't want to be uncomfortable on the one thing that carries you the whole day from mm -hmm. the moment you leave the house to the moment you get back. So when you're choosing a shoe, it's like a life partner. Like you <laughs> literally spend so much time in that shoe, so uh -huh. you have to choose wisely. How many shoes do you have you as, as, as Jerry? A lot. Roughly. I have a shoe lover. That's why you have to venture into it. Yes. Hey, sour, sour. let's talk about now Va Kenya and uh, of course we have Jerry Mbota who is the founder that is and it's nice to have you. Let's talk about, before I even talk about what is right on our table, let's talk about Va Kenya. You began in 2017, you have come through 2018, now we're in almost ending 2019. It's, it has been such a path and a journey from beginning. What are, what are some of the highlights that you have noted in, in your journey? Uh... Well, mm -hmm. Vakenya has been the most challenging thing I have had to do oh, right. all my life. Um, because it's, it's, it's not just uh, about starting a company. Mm -hmm. You see, right now, we are at an age where entrepreneurship is very glorified, but uh, the challenges are not pointed out. And there are very many challenges in entrepreneurship. Right. So when I was getting started, it was about designing shoes, mm -hmm. right? I taught myself how to design mm -hmm. and all that. But now I have the product. What else from there? I have to learn Marketing. how to be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I have to learn how to market. I have to learn how to manage. Huh? Mm -hmm. I have to learn how to staff and all that. Like you move from just being an entrepreneur who is someone who has an idea and makes it a reality mm -hmm. to now actually being a business person. Awesome. You see, you have executing to incorporate the plan and the yeah, idea. executing them mm -hmm. and the ideas, being a leader, being a manager, mm -hmm. and all that. That has been very challenging. Hey, you must say, <laughs> already so much has mentioned in terms of management, leadership, marketing, sales. So much has already been said within a span of a minute. But uh, let's talk about these, uh, Jerry, about. Va Kenya has been there for all the years that we have mentioned. You have talked about uh, venturing uh, through research, as you said. One thing that really stands out is that you are hitting the market mm -hmm. with what you're doing. Yeah. Most people begin with like one product, then one and one, the tengina, one tengina. It's almost now three years. Yeah. Still the same product. Yeah, still the same product. Still the same product. You see, uh, when you decide to venture into an industry, mm -hmm. uh, it is prudent to see how you can maneuver mm -hmm. the industry rather than just looking at the industry itself. Right. When I decided to enter into the shoe industry, I already had a vision of what I wanted, yeah. what I had envisioned. It was a long game. Mm -hmm. It was not in need for the short game. You didn't it just was give a it one yeah, time shot. exactly. Mm -hmm. It was a, a long game, which is why I'm still doing shoes, and which is why I will still continue doing shoes until Vaken is a household name. Whoa. All we right, are making you want to shoes brand for it and make it real. Right? Yes, we are making shoes for the African feet. And that, that's one thing to note. Yeah. You're making shoes or other feet. That is feet for, shoot, shoes for the feet. Yeah. For the African men and women to wear. The African feet to be precise. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So that's your slogan? No, oh, no, no. Mm. Our slogan is when you grow together, you succeed together. Wow, big yeah. up, big up. So th this, this, uh, this is a mega company. Yeah. So it's a limited by itself, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So it's a registered. Incorporated. Yep. It's a limited liability company. Wow, awesome. L let's talk about um, the structure. You, when we were offset, you talked about um, 
you having begun some of the things that you had to face you know to launching out and marketing mm -hmm. and most people oftentimes they are hitting the social media going to market themselves manzai mabesh they call sub status how did you hit the market in terms of your uh, marketability um I think uh, the first and the most important thing is that I started from scratch. Right. And that is something that is very advisable to anyone who is planning to build something. Because building something from scratch, you get to build your own system, your own culture, and all that. So basically, uh, we started from scratch, mm -hmm. from some very low quality products. <laughs> When you are getting started. <laughs> Who used to buy the low quality products? We are, they actually used to be clients for them. We have literally grown with our clients. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's the whole thing. Uh, that is why you see in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you find uh, most people, they build, then expect people to come. And that is not how it's supposed to be. First get to the people, then build with them. You must be a startup trainer. That's the plan. What? Oh, you're planning to head there? Uh, definitely, definitely, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been very challenging. Mm -hmm. Even right now, when I have friends who are uh, starting up, it's usually like, uh, I usually love to take them through this, you know, mentor them and all that. I'm, I'm not saying I'm yet at that level, mm -hmm. but it's important that they know, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, most of these things, they are not things that are mostly in our education system and all that. They are things that we actually get to learn from. Right. From scratch. Talent. Yeah. We are not doing talent right now. Exactly. That is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You work alone? No, you no, no. I have a partner. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a partner. Uh, we started out together with uh, my partner. You see, uh, the way I so taught myself how to design. You can yeah, she's called Daisy. Uh -huh. Daisy Riri. Hey, okay. Fitty Daisy. Big up. Uh -huh. <laughs> big up, big up. Um, yeah, so we started with her. Uh, then uh, we... S we we had another partner after right. two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you are three? Yeah, now we are three. Right. Yeah. Th that's, that's, that's nice, you know, bringing on board other people and their ideas and their perspective about the business. Mm -hmm. And I know it's, it's, it's a booming one. Uh, just a quick one. Mm -hmm. um, from the time you began and coming all through, there, there are things that probably you have noted. There's a reason to why you have been rising every day. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, these things that you have, you have been noting? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of the things is uh, knowing when to grow mm -hmm. and when to add something. You see, at, uh, at, at every stage, uh, for example, when it's something like funding, uh, when you're starting out, you don't need uh, funding exactly to start out. See, that's one of the things, uh, for example, most people say, I can't get started because I don't have capital. But the thing is, when you're getting started, capital is actually the last thing you need. It's mostly wow. about mm -hmm. knowing what you need at that time. Mm -hmm. Get what you need at that time. You see, when you're getting started, uh, you get uh, you need talent, right? You see, because I'm getting started and I'm making shoes, I mm -hmm. definitely needed talent. I taught myself how to design, and uh, my partner Daisy taught herself how to market. Oh, so you're not all of you under the same uh, department. We are not under mm -hmm. the same department. Same company, different departments. Yeah, different right. departments. Mm -hmm. You see? Then after some point, we got our first funding after two years. And that, that's because at that point, we were ready. If we had looked for funding before two years, we would have just squandered the money because we were not ready for it then. You need to know when you are ready for what. Do I need partnership? At this time, maybe. What kind of a partnership? Uh, do I need an investor? Do I need a talent partner? Huh? Do I need a distribution partner? At what point of the business do right. you need what? Are That's you having your important. pen? Uh, it's my hope that you're having your pen and your noting pad, you know, writing some of the things, these things that you hear, you know, Jerry mentioned. But of course, before we even look at what Jerry has been doing, you can interact with us on our Facebook page. That is Y254, of course. And uh, we have a question that is already there. And then, of course, on our Twitter handle, you can talk to us, that is Y254. And then, of course, my name uh, uh, on Twitter, my account is K underscore Alex. You mind sharing your account also? Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm going to start with the Vakenya accounts. Right. Uh, it's uh, Vakenya on Facebook, at Vakenya on Instagram, at Vakenya on Twitter. And uh, my personal account is Njerimbote on Facebook, at Njerimbote on Twitter, and Njerimbote on Instagram. I bet you're going to make the same mistake I made. So it's V A A, no space, just write Kenya. Yeah. Va, Vakenya, no space, Kenya. One word. That is for IG. That's for IG. Then you get rolling and you're there.
Yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the things that you have done. These are just a portion of what Jerry has been doing or yes, for, for the three years, yeah? And looking at, the, let's have just have a look at the first one. And uh, what are some of the fabrics that you've used for this one? Uh, this, uh, this is a Viking boot. As you can see, mm -hmm. let me just hold it. As you can let, see, let me help uh, you to hold so as you can use your mic. Let me help you hold the shoe. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, what you have right here in front, mm -hmm. this is leather. Mm -hmm. It's called thin leather. It's very high quality leather, by the way. This is thin leather. And uh, this is a short-grained jute material. And uh, this is a TPR sole. Mm -hmm. TPR is thermoplastic rubber. All right. Yeah, this is a TPR sole. Mm -hmm. So basically, the idea mm -hmm. behind this shoe was uh, to be an uh, a shoe that you can wear when hiking, you know, going for adventures and all that. Wow. And also during the cold seasons uh, when it's all muddy and all that. You see, for example, this jute material, it's very easy to wash. Mm -hmm. You can see the color selection that we've used. It's mm -hmm. one that uh, it camouflages with the mud, the color of yeah. mud. Uh, no yeah. one will notice. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all that. And it's very easy to wash. Mm -hmm. They are called Viking boots. Awesome. Yeah. I'm loving even the way you have designed it to look mm -hmm. this way. Yeah. Looks like an official shoe. You can wear your trousers, you know, and then no one notices whatever you're Cover wearing. it up. Yeah. If you're a fashionista, you know, let it come outside mm -hmm. and all that. There are so many ways to rock it. You can rock it officially, casually. Yeah. Wow. So if you, by chance you're thinking of like, man, I'm, I want to get this product. Man, trust you, it's such a nice product. And it, it's even warm inside, trust me. As much as it looks. Looks so nice. Yeah. So how much does these probably cost? Uh, they go for 3,000 Kenya shillings. There is a pair? Yeah, a pair. All right. Mm. Jerry, let me ask, where do you get your fabrics? Uh, we source everything locally. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when you say Va Kenya, we literally mean Va Kenya. So we put on African wear. Yeah. That is what you're talking about, the African way, you know, yeah. African thing. You see, the, the whole idea behind uh, Va Kenya mm -hmm. was just... Uh, it's teaching people to believe. Mm -hmm. We as Africans mm -hmm. and uh, Kenyans, let's start from Kenyans and Africa, we need to believe. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a very high quality shoe. Like, mm -hmm. you see, uh, most of the times people get surprised when they find out that we actually make our shoes. Because, ah, you see, it's, it's, it's very high quality. But it starts from belief. If we are doing this, then it will inspire someone else to mm -hmm. do something else. You see? we The moment we start... Uh, producing mm -hmm. our own products and consuming our own products that will that is what will bring the rise of our e everyone everyone on entrepreneurship tuesday is talking about you know the issue of um consuming our local products mm -hmm. how best do you think we can consume our own local products in terms of the shoes that you're making uh sorry come how on best again. how best can we can we consume our, our own or especially in terms of shoes like was oh that, so, so right now um what had happened yeah actually that was one of our biggest challenges when mm -hmm. we were getting started because uh most people relate our kenyan products to probably low quality oh. and all because that because it's local yeah because it's local mm -hmm. but we are changing that narrative the one thing that people should know, you see that, uh, you see, we are the biggest producers of raw materials in Africa. Like uh, our, raw, our leather, it lives here, then goes abroad. Mm -hmm. Shoes are manufactured, then they are brought back to us at 10 times the price. And, and yet, we got to buy. And we buy. Mm -hmm. So how about we just buy our raw materials ourselves, and I make, the, make our products ourselves, and consume our products ourselves. And it's not just with shoes. It starts with shoes. It goes to clothes. It goes to other products, mm -hmm. even insecticides. You know, it's, it's that crazy. The spectrum is that broad. Mm -hmm. Let us just make and consume our products. Wow, I, I love I love what you've talked about, you know, consuming. And I was looking, I was watching this documentary uh, last weekend about, um, I think it was on Friday, when they, they, they were talking about how people, how Kenyan product is all the way taken to the, to the, to the, to the farmer, to the West. Mm -hmm. Then it comes back as really something different. Yeah. And now it's 10 times the price. 10 times the price, yeah. And yet we're saying you don't want to consume local products. Mm -hmm. They are local, they go there, they are whatever they are done. They come back as products, mm -hmm. finished products. They come back as finished products. And you're ready to buy them. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the second shoe. Or rather, let's first of all have a look at some of the things you've been doing. Wow, this looks so beautiful. Wow, this is now the typical African wear thing. Yep. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. It's the Ankara collection. Yeah, it's the Ankara collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, basically, what you see here, mm -hmm. these are repurposed old, uh, old butter, 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 butter rubbers. Mm -hmm. They've been repurposed. You know, maybe you have an old shoe, yeah. and that the sole is still good, so we just use the sole wow. and uh, make brand new uppers. All right. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Kukuna Juma Zuna feel it's time for me to get the way with them. You better bring them here to Vat, Kenya. Letter, letter. Well, I love the the black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Male, female. Actually, that's a that's a that's couples a thing. it's a it's a favorite. <laughs> it's one of our clients' favorites. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a couple's thing. Yeah, I it's a couple's thing. Yeah, it's a his and hers. Mm -hmm. It's a his and hers collection. So what wanna propose? To <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's, we that's got you. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at something with this young lady over here. She has the bag. Yeah, she has the bag. Do you do the same? Yeah, we make bags, but mm. uh, we don't make bags on their own. Mm -hmm. We only make them as a collection, you know, a shoe and bag collection. All right, as a yeah. package? Yeah. It's all right. That looks so nice, and even the way you have done it, mm -hmm. even for the shoes. How, w w when we're talking about um, the African, the African design, mm -hmm. how how do you place the flower? Because it looks so so well planned, so well arranged. Oh uh, no, th that's now the design factor. Mm -hmm. The design factor. You see, you have a, a whole fabric, mm -hmm. so you basically place your patterns. Which you so buy as a large product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You buy them in in bulk. All right. Uh, you do leather. Uh huh. And still, it's part of what you're doing in terms of African. Yeah. Leather still locally? Yeah, locally. Mm -hmm. Everything. We source everything locally. Mm -hmm. We have so many turneries in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We mm -hmm. have so many turneries and they produce very high quality leather. Actually, most of the leather is exported. Right. They sh most of the shoes that we wear, you'll find it's, it's our leather. Okay. Uh, okay. Just I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make a match with him, like, man. Okay. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also loving what you're wearing. I believe it's part of what you do. Yeah, definitely. It's part of what you do. Uh -huh. it's, uh, this is a Jamila boot. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, the, it's same the same as, as these, yeah? yeah it's the same as that. It's for the ladies. Mm -hmm. It's very good for the rainy season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all that. Because uh, this is artificial leather. It's, mm -hmm. It does not absorb water. Oh. So, yeah. No you linkages. get to walk, especially in this Nairobi weather. Yeah. This Nairobi weather, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere anyway yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I'm, loving, I'm loving the way, you, the way you're doing it. H how do you get to look at the color and how to place them? I'm, I'm loving the way you have done even for these. It's black, brown, then mm -hmm. this one is white and blue. Mm -hmm. How do you get to get to that? Uh, that's also a part of the design aspect. Mm -hmm. So definitely um, uh, when I'm choosing the colors to blend, they mm -hmm. have to be colors that are blending. Yeah. I'm not going to take colors that Don't are... Bananas. Uh, <laughs> Though there are people uh, th like uh, love 50 colors in yeah one exactly thing. that's why we customize actually when you come to me and tell me I want this Viking boot in a variety of colors I'll do them in whichever color selection you want Wow yeah so right, we, uh, we customize as well Well in business I know I was taught that you know one month's meeting many poisons and sure. taste and preferences are totally different totally and we must accommodate everyone because it's a business and the customer mm -hmm. is always right do you agree with that by the way yeah the customer is always right unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, Jerry, we have to wind up. But I have a question for you. Uh -huh. how, uh, how much do you spend in traveling? Uh, in traveling, personally, not much. Uh, as, as it now, I am still very grounded. I am still very grounded. Wow, being yeah. still a student at Mount Kenya University. I am not a student anymore. I saw that. Oh, you're a graduate. I, I am a, yeah, I'm a graduate. With business management. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, you have decided to ground yourself. Yeah. So, how much approximately do you use in a year? Personally, uh -huh. uh, not much. Not much. Don't give the quotation. No, here's the thing, by the way. Uh -huh. I need people to understand. Entrepreneurship, like uh, when you get into entrepreneurship, uh -huh. entrepreneurship is not a money spree. It okay. is anything but that. Uh -huh. <laughs> like uh, when you get into entrepreneurship, mm. do something mm -hmm. that you have a passion for. Wow. Because that is the only thing that will keep you going. Amazing. Because you will get broke, you will get frustrated, you will go through so many emotions that th your passion is the only thing that will keep, it will Thank keep you, you going. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do what... Your heart tells you, go for your passion and that's it. We get to wrap it from that point. May thanks, Jerry, for coming along. It's been a pleasure to have you. Awesome. And wish you the best as VAR Kenya is growing every day. We look forward to have you know, the CEO. That yeah. has been Jerry, the founder of VAR Kenya. Of course, Barry Moss is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. This is Y254. We got so much and we unwrap the mysteries that are happening in the entrepreneurial field. My name is Karanja Alex.